Media in partnership with V Bank. Now, the discussion today, a roundtable discussion that we will have together. You can contribute on the different platforms that are available. Follow at V Bank NG, at Streamline Media NG, and this radio station channels to send in your contribution. We'll be touching on issues that affect you, the common man, and educating you on things that arise so you are acquainted with what's happening, the new developments and conversations around fintech, that's financial technology. Getting right into the show, today we'll be discussing. A Bitcoin haulage, a huge buying to Bitcoin. We'll find out why if the company makes such a huge purchase. We'll find out the, the stance of the Security and Exchange Commission on cryptocurrency guidelines. As the new information is reaching us, we'll know that the CBN possibly might sway their stance on that. I'm joined by my guest. His name is Fisayo. Durojaye is an Africa-focused early-stage venture capital investor. That's a, a mouthful, right? <laughs> but he's a fintech enthusiast, and he'll be providing detailed insight for today's conversation. I'd like to welcome Fisayo Durojaye. Hi, Fisayo. Good mo- Good afternoon. Hey, Valentine. Good afternoon. I'm very good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, let's jump right into this conversation today. Now, for fintech today, our first uh, story is about Square, the company uh, fintech firm in the United States that has bought fifty million dollars worth of bit- Bitcoin. And uh, who is Square? Uh, Fisayo, first of all, educate the listeners. Let's understand what the company is about. I mean, Square is a, is a payment company. Uh, is for is for retail payment, uh, basically. So, uh, see it as a POS, uh, POS type terminals uh, that allows you know uh, offline merchants to receive uh, and make. I mean, to receive payment you know, from their customers uh, across uh, using a small smart device, uh, mobile can be con- connected to the mobile as the teal based. Uh, you know, as the accounting bit at the back end connected to the till, connected to your inventory, so they can know exactly how, how you know, uh, how your business is doing or how your 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 trade is is, is faring mm. uh, on a daily basis. So that's the basic uh, summary of, of, of Square. So providing all this accounting back ends and all that. I mean, from going by, yeah. by, by your statement description of Square, one would expect that they won't be able to rake in that amount, $50 million. I mean, how, how did they come about this fund and why are they investing so much, so heavily in cryptocurrency? What's, what's in the offing? Something smelling, something that you know that's going on in the background? I mean, it's something always smells when, when big or large companies like this, uh, you know, make moves like this. Uh, and uh, again, let me just quickly mention uh, as well that uh, you know Square is not a small company. Uh, the, the the retail business in in the US alone is in trillions on, and trillions of dollars uh, in itself. It's a huge economy, yes. uh, and I think uh, Square is also operating in not only in the US but also in Canada and and a few European countries, I believe. Uh, so it's it's a huge, huge, huge company. Uh, so I believe that if they are making investment, if they are buying cryptocurrency, I don't think they're just buying because they want to save uh, save their money in in crypto. Mm-hmm. I think they want to. Uh, they probably want to use it for uh, for some payment switching, you know, or to be able to you know, use, use it to, to to for transactions basically, rather than just uh, just buying and keeping. Okay. Okay, so they are in for this business, but that's actually reflects our falls in a category. If we look at Nigeria now in this space, a lot of people have been greeting the idea of cryptocurrency or crypto um, with skepticism, mm. seeing the CBN's current stance on it. But that seems to be swaying. Um, I don't know what's possible, but I mean, it's the imagination is limitless. But if you think about it now, with the current trend and news that's hitting us, that uh, the Security and Exchange Commission has released guidelines on cryptocurrency. I'll break it down. Yes, Security and Exchange Commission recently released the draft regulation designating cryptocurrencies as securities so it's official now what that means is that their issuance as well as the activities around crypto exchange uh, will be regulated by them solely in essence anything and anyone involved in cryptocurrency space in nigeria will have to be regulated by the sec by this i i probably assume that um, there will be a benchmark you know, you have to have a certain uh, amount of money as a minimal cost to get into that space. But Fisayo, please share some insights on this SEC stance and if if possibly um, Nigerian banks could start playing in that field and what CBN might say. Yes. Uh, okay. So, I mean, for me, I think I totally disagree uh, with, <laughs> with the SEC about categorizing uh, cryptocurrency as a security. Okay. I don't think it meets the requirement. I mean, this is me personally. Mm. Uh, I don't think it meets the requirement for it. What's the fundamental driver of the pricing of Bitcoin? Mm. You can't, it, its fundamental value 
cannot be determined. It's its pricing is based on scarcity and availability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that that doesn't qualify it as security. So people say they are investing in crypto. I don't think it's an investment. I think crypto is a is a means to an end, mm -hmm. not an end in itself. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people need to uh, that's what people need to know uh, in, 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 in in this. So I'll give an example. Right. Yes. Uh, so people use cryptocurrency for for many things, right? You can use it for remittances, meaning that you want to transfer money from Nigeria to, to the US. You can, uh, you know, buy uh, Bitcoin and sell in the US, and then you get your your, your dollar value. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So it's a, it's it's it can be used for things like that, but being an asset in itself can be a difficult stance. Uh, I mean, it's still a, a a, a large pill for me to swallow. And I know it's not only the Security of uh, an Exchange Commission of Nigeria that, is, as, that, that has de designated this. Mm -hmm. A lot of countries are looking at it. Uh, I, I know the, Ch the Chinese Central Bank is looking at creating a, a national cryptocurrency. Uh, a few breakthroughs have been happening in Europe, designated security and all of that. But I just think that the, the, the fundamental question around what makes something a security has not been answered. Uh, and I'm not, con I'm not convinced about that argument. So for me, I think that's my own personal opinion. Also, you don't now think... to your final questions around yes, yeah, sorry uh, around Nigerian banks. I think we're we're leaning around Nigerian banks, mm. especially yes. like, like v, right. banks like V Bank, for instance. Like, Would they be playing in that field exactly. anytime soon? You know, so I think that some banks are already playing in this in in this space mm. uh, because of uh, of the current you know credit uh, access to or in access or lack of access to uh, to foreign currency uh, to foreign exchange right to the US dollars. People are. Uh, are looking at cryptocurrency as the alternative mm -hmm. or as the as the savior, as the case might be, because the uh, decision is restricting access uh, to dollars. Uh, people cannot buy, uh, you know, dollars to pay for their uh, for the school fees of their children. But of course, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other, you know, cryptocurrency is is, is handy and is to a large extent decentralized yes. and can be easily accessed uh, by people to to. To ensure that they're able to make their payment uh, a lot more seamlessly. Mm. All right, thank you. Let's leave that topic. Let's move on very quickly to the next one. It's uh, this one is big. There was an excerpt I read from uh, the 2019 Africa uh, Tech Startup Funding Report that shows that 77 startups raised about 107 million dollars during uh, 2019 alone. Uh, countries that dominated this space included Kenya, Nigeria, and Egypt. I mean. First of all, when you hear these countries, you know that, I mean, they've been forward thinking in terms of financial inclusion. But then, largely, a lot of people in, this, in these countries, Nigeria, Kenya, and Egypt, are still uh, grappling with the efforts to include as much people as possible as part of the population, right? But why are these countries mm -hmm. actively dominant in the fintech space? What would you say is the major factor? They are some of the biggest economies in Africa. Uh, so if I, I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple. Yes. Uh, it's large market opportunities. So Nigeria, Egypt, uh, South Africa, Kenya, those are the, the, the biggest economies in Africa today. Uh, so if you're looking at Sub-Saharan Africa, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll ex South Africa out, out of it. So all you're left with is Nigeria, Egypt, and, and to a large extent, Kenya. And for, I mean, if I look at Kenya market, because I've invested in Kenya myself, uh, Kenya is, I mean, I see Kenya as East Africa. Right, because what works in Kenya might potentially be uh, be copied and pasted in 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 Rwanda, in Tanzania, in Uganda, uh, as case might be, because they seem to be uh, to be closely linked uh, yeah. in all that they do, right? Mm. Uh, and I think that's how th that's why those uh, those those markets are large. So now talking specifically about uh, financial inclusion, right? Uh, I mean, countries like Kenya seem to have have been at the forefront of financial inclusion, even globally. Uh, especially with the uh, with the mobile money revolution, yes, uh, and then and, and then the things that that, that drove mobile money, uh, the things that drove mobile money uh, in Kenya are not allowed to thrive in most other countries because the central banks are not allowing uh, telcos to be able to act as financial intermediary mm. uh, for people, which is where the biggest problem is. So if you look at data in Nigeria right now, there are over 100 million uh, telephone uh, SIM cards. They have 100 million uh, SIM cards, mm. but they're less than 30 million, or just about 30 million bank accounts, right? Uh, so it means that uh, MTN, Glow, Etisalat, all of those, uh, those people have wider reach, wider customers uh, compared to what the banks have done. Mm. Uh, what if you allow them to, to be able to use their phones or their SIM cards uh, for some form of, of financial inclusion, for, for sponsor of financial activities? I think the, the problem will be largely, uh, to a large extent, dealt with, uh, you know, compared to just uh, limiting 
uh, that to, to the bank. Okay. And just to, to, to also uh, clarify properly, I know the CBN is taking steps, uh, not, not trying to allow the telcos to, uh, to use their, their, their advantage. Mm -hmm. They're trying to create other avenue, payment service banks, you know, uh, yes. mobile money yes. type agents, agency banking, all of that kind of work. But hey, uh, you know, we've seen how Empesa worked. Mm -hmm. Why not just do that? Uh, as, as far as I'm, I'm, I'm aware, I know that VBank is implementing a, a strategy for agency banking and they've also uh, removed, I mean, they are, they, I know their services in terms of transactions on their app, the VBank app is seamless and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, devoid of any single charge. So you can transfer money without, you know, having to incur any charge for pet transfers. But I want to especially thank you, Fisayo Dorojaya, for being an apt analyst uh, on these issues that we treated today. Uh, remember that you, as you're listening from any part of the world, you can always uh, re-watch and re-listen to this. The podcast will be available on this platforms at Streamline Media NG. Also check out the website, valentinohu.com. You can also check out at VBank NG. Uh, we'll be circulating as far as, as, as far reaching as possible. Fisayo, thank you so much and have a lovely day. Thanks. Uh, thanks. All thanks right. for having me. Yeah. Bye. My name is Valentine. Until next week, Tuesday. Stay with us.